It has been said that some of the most beautiful things in our universe are the most deadly. And this? Well, this ship is no exception. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back. In this episode of An Architect Reviews, I will be taking a look at Star Citizen's first Corvette, the largest and most powerful military ship yet added to the game. I'm of course speaking about the Aegis Hammerhead. In order to begin though, I must reframe the way I analyze ships. You see, the Aegis Hammerhead, like the Constellation, was designed from a utilitarian perspective. That is to say that they were designed to be useful or practical rather than being attractive. Now in the real world, that would mean that analyzing it as a designer or an architect would seem kind of weird. But in reality, we have to remember that it was designed by game designers who aren't aeronautical engineers. They don't know exactly how to put together a spaceship and therefore their goal was to design a ship to look like a spaceship that would perform the functions that were stated. In this case, to be a warship. So, as you'll see in this video, it is through this very important reframing, as well as conventional architectural analysis, that I shall measure the success of the design of the Hammerhead, both inside and out. We begin here, on the bridge of the Hammerhead on the interior, and that's because it is one of the most controversial spaces, at least to me, of the design. Instead of mounting the bridge at the top, or at the front, like conventional science fiction designs, it's been mounted on the bottom. This makes for a very dramatic effect, but unfortunately, as you could tell, severely limits vertical visibility. Personally, I subscribe to the philosophy of form following function, but there are exceptions, and I think that this bridge certainly is one of them. And there are two things that come to mind that have led me to this conclusion. One is that the space, as I've said, is very dramatic, and that is important for the design of the ship to leave an impression on you. The second reason is because the pilot in this instance does not need maximum visibility in order for him or her to perform their function, and that is to provide a stable platform for the guns mounted to the hull. The description of the Hammerhead, after all, does read gunship, and it's for those reasons I find this space very successful. But there's more to this space than just the form of it. There's also the very important details which are made to convince us that this is indeed a bridge or a cockpit. There is definitely inspiration of aircraft here with all these switches and toggles and screens on the roof, but what's more interesting to me in this space is the design language that they've begun to employ here to convey to us that this is indeed a military ship. Note the exposed electronics, the warning labels, the color palette, the grays, the oranges, the olive drab, even the intentionally cooler lighting that casts hard shadows. All of these are meant to compound to convey to us the message that this is a serious space meant for people who know what they're doing. But now we continue our tour, moving aft to the lift that will bring us up to the main deck. Here on the main deck, you'll notice that the color palette is very consistent. The design language has been continued here. Greens, grays, and accented orange colors, as well as a very nice labeling system which indicates what space you're about to enter. Very important for this space we are entering now, the airlock, a true airlock with two doors for depressurization. It has a different sort of lighting scheme and also employs a really clever blast door which conceals its location at the front of the ship. While that makes the space interesting, it's not what makes it successful. You see, the color palette here is very important. The red that they use for the doors indicating that this is a special door that leads somewhere different, somewhere where you should be careful, and the yellow lighting inside of the airlock space saying caution, be careful what you're about to do, this is an airlock. These subconscious color cues are really important in architecture and in design to indicate a difference in space, a space where the user should be cautious. It very much says to me that they paid attention to every level of detail, from the keypads on the doors all the way to the color selection. The expression that they want to convey in this space is also very interesting with these mechanical components here and the harsh yellow lighting cast from below. It definitely gives it a much more dramatic feeling. 
And this space, of course, then leads us to one of the side turrets, one of five, which actually disconnects from the hull and becomes its own little pod. This, of course, gives each turret a little bit more free range of motion, this form deriving itself purely from function rather than from design. A pretty nifty trick. As we make our way aft, though, you'll begin to notice one of the very key features of the interior design feeling of the Age's Hammerhead. That's the cylindrically shaped hallways. This seems to be one of the things that Aegis, well, CIG, is going to use to show that this is an Aegis interior, something that is also borrowed from the Idris. Also worth noting here is again the immaculate attention to detail, the blast doors that will section off areas that have been damaged, the padded walls that will protect crewmates during evasive maneuvers that may throw them back and forth without proper inertial dampening. And of course, again, the attention to detail with signage, never ignoring the fact that crew members in disorientation during, say, a battle, may need to look to signage to direct them to their next station, or to where they may be needed most. Something I think we all can agree that the Starfarer desperately needs. A well-designed floor plan is sure to make any captain happy, as he or she shall know that their crew members will be able to navigate without issue. What makes captains even happier about the Hammerhead, though, is that there is a whole section devoted to them. I'm, of course, speaking of the captain's quarters. Stepping through this bulkhead door reminiscent of old battleships, we are greeted with one of the best-designed small spaces on the ship. That's because it really recognizes the needs of the user, the captain in this case, a place to put knickknacks and personalize the space. The lighting, the desk's position, how it's slightly raised above the other part of the room, you can just see the captain addressing their first officer. What really makes this space exceptional, though, is that the designers understood the difference between public and private space. This private rear area is different not just because there's a door separating it from the other part of the captain's quarters, but it's also different by the way it's sized and the way it's lit. You'll notice that the lighting in here is a lot warmer, and this is intentional. You see, warmer lighting, that is, lighting more around the 3000 to 3500K range, has been shown in studies to induce much more relaxation in those who are occupying that space, versus the much higher frequency light, such as here in the bathroom, tend to subconsciously motivate the occupant to move much more quickly. That's why a lot of fast food restaurants employ fluorescent light fixtures that utilize 5000 to 6500K light temperature lights to try to encourage people to move much work quickly through the restaurant to clear the tables. And having worked on several commercial restaurant construction projects, I can tell you that this is definitely the case and has been brought up by my clients. Moving back out here into the hallway, those of you who are paying attention to the light temperatures will notice that the hallways are also very coolly lit. The consistency here is fantastic. You know, something that has really struck me every single time I've taken a look at this ship is just how consistent the color palette and design language are. Here again in the components section of the ship, we see the color scheme, the oranges again being employed to show caution. And again here, the designers really sell the space by introducing components which are necessary for it to function, like the engineer readout screen, the pipes along the ceiling, the ventilation, the caution signs. Also note here, not once did I say the space is either too large or too small. That's because I really feel that the size of the hallways and the spaces within the ship are very well done. They seem just right for the crew that would be running up and down the hallway. Speaking of the crew though, now let's check out the quarters that they will be occupying during long missions. Here we arrive at the crew quarters. You'll note here, specifically where the beds are concerned, that the light temperature has once again changed. While this is no 600i, it does still need to take into consideration the occupant's psychological health, especially on very long missions, and so I very much appreciate the softness of this room that's been employed, the 45 degree edge corners, the soft padding on the interior of the bed and on the walls, the much warmer color temperatures where the beds are. All of these things are compounding to really make this area feel different and much more intimate than the other parts of the ship. I also think it's noteworthy to talk about how the space is just sized correctly. It's not too big and it's not too small, it's just enough for the eight crew members who will be occupying it. I also really appreciate that this shower room is separate from the toilet room on the other side. 
It's something that I personally like to include on many of my residential home designs because I like to give the user the opportunity to use both spaces simultaneously. It also feels subconsciously better to clean yourself in a space where you're not also using the bathroom. And more practically speaking, it does remove the smell of the toilet from the area where you're taking a shower. Also present here is the materiality that really sells that this is a military vessel. The steel surface is really bringing home that this space could be hosed down in case they needed to clean it quickly. So it's interesting that they employed a programmatically luxurious idea of separating both toilets and showers, but the materiality still suggests a utilitarian and military vessel. But it's always good to have some level of luxury, even to the most utilitarian of designs. But now we step into the most aft section of the ship, the stern. Although the hammerhead is large, it certainly isn't the biggest ship in the game, and therefore some spaces had to be hybridized. This cargo room also contains the dual engines on either sides, those big glowy things that are spitting off snow for some reason. Cancer-inducing internal nuclear winters aside, this space is very dramatic once again, but I think the designers overlooked one major problem, and that's if you open the door in this space, you depressurize the entire ship. I'm not sure if they're going to make these yellow blast doors operable in non-emergency situations, but I really hope they would have doors like this that go over here into one of the turrets in every section where you can open a door to the exterior. Because although this is definitely intentioned for planetary use, it's not always going to be the case that the planet you land on has a atmospheric pressure similar to that of what's inside the ship. It just seems like an explosive decompression waiting to happen. In conclusion though, I do find this space to be a very special one. It definitely is very dramatic, and it finds its success through the again successful application of the design language established by Aegis. Again, with the color palette here that's consistent throughout the entire ship, but also the exposed mechanicals. It's basically saying to you, it doesn't care that you can see all these components. It doesn't care about your comfort. What it cares about is performing its duty, and that is to be a warship. And it does this very successfully. Successfully. Again, look at these warning labels. Again, look at all of these wonderfully detailed exposed mechanicals. It really does sell the idea that this is indeed a spaceship, even if these things aren't actually real. One of the things that really bothers me here though, and that's a bit of cognitive dissonance, is the idea that they have EVA suits here, but again, no airlock door. If you open that big door in the bottom to have to use those EVA suits, you depressurize the entire ship. So I really hope that they do introduce some real airlock doors, at least make those doors that connect to the hallways where the crew will be occupying, presumably without EVA suits, closable. That way we don't vent the ship. And I will remind you guys, for those of you watching this and are new to Star Citizen, that depressurization will in fact be in the game in a future update. So having that happen will in fact kill you in the future. But now we move to a really exciting part of the ship for those of you who are engineers. That is, of course, the engineer station here overlooking the main engine bay and cargo bay. Design-wise, it's very consistent again, once again, with the design language, but also very much in form. You'll notice that the glass that overlooks the bay is at a 45 degree angle. This language of form very much echoes the Hammerhead's bridge, as you'll remember that those glass panels are also 45 On the second deck, though, you'll notice that there is an inconsistency of design. There's a sealable airlock door here that seals off the crew area of the ship from the engineering section, which could be decompressed. Why didn't they do this on the main deck? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they thought the mess hall was the more important space? Probably not. This was actually a last minute addition to the design. They added the second deck because they realized they didn't have a mess hall. And so I think these inconsistencies are because they realized they made mistakes earlier in the design and wanted to correct them for the last edition before they released the ship. Unfortunately, it somewhat left this space unresolved. This mess hall area is wonderfully done. The design language is great, but the size of the space is probably a little bit too big. It takes up a little bit too much real estate. Why does it do that, might you ask? Well, that's because if you've been paying attention, you'll realize that we've come nearly to the end of this tour, but you haven't seen a place for you to store weapons. That's right, there is no armory on this ship. 
So I think that they could have reduced the space somewhere either below or up here to add in that armory. It seems very strange to me that in ships like the 600i, a touring and exploration vessel made for luxury, that it has an armory, but not this military vessel that would presumably sometimes carry a small contingent of marines. And you might make the valid argument that there is no evidence here that this ship would carry marines, but then I would remind you that there is an airlock at the front of the ship. And there is absolutely no indication from anything that that airlock is meant to dock with anything. That is to say that the purpose of that airlock is for allowing people to EVA out to either retake or to board an enemy vessel. This then is the biggest inconsistency of design for the ship. It's a small one, but it is a big one at the same time. Especially considering that some armory functionality has been added into Star Citizen recently. Yes, you can in fact place weapons inside of your ship for other people to use. So I really hope this inconsistency is resolved. One last critique I'd like to add in here is the fact that they have very few windows on board. Now, I understand this is a military vessel, but let's also remember that this is a space game and being reminded that you're in space, flying through space while occupying the spaceship is a great way to remind us where we are, to give us a sense of place and really sell the immersion in this world like this ship already does so well. One note to make though is that glass in this game is not made of glass, it's actually made of a sort of carbon nanotube fiber and therefore is as strong, according to lore, as steel. So having more is really not that much of a structural issue. In the end though, I have some closing thoughts. I think that the design language of Aegis really has shown clear here. I very much enjoy the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it really sells what it is trying to convey, that it is a military vessel designed to perform a task. I also find the floor plan and arrangement of program to be very successful. The crew quarters are very closely located in the center of the ship, so they have quick access to any of the battle stations in the event of a sudden conflict. Clear signage on the floors, walls, and ceilings are also a very welcome and needed addition to allow those who are crew to navigate the space during very stressful battle conditions, where it's possible for smoke, fire, and explosions to temporarily disorient the user. Color temperature in the different program also responds very well to the specific program's use. 9000K in workspaces and low 3000 to 3500K in rest spaces very well thought out by the designers. I also love that they chose the name Hammerhead to define and inform the design. It definitely made the ship's exterior hull design very aggressive looking, and I very much enjoy the result. A ship that will rightly instill fear in any so unfortunate soul to see its silhouette pass across their bow. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section below. What ship would you like to see appear on the next episode of An Architect Reviews? If you're interested in Star Citizen and haven't gotten the game yet, make sure you use my reference code, which will give you 5,000 UEC, which you can use to buy either a ship or weapons in the 3.3.5 update. If you want to meet me and get involved in my community, also be sure to check out the Arm Code Discord below. It's a big community I share with two other YouTubers where we play lots of games together and get you guys directly into videos we make. If you like my video, if you like me, and if you'd like to see more, also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I hope to see you guys next time.